The world is a vampire. Sent to drain. Secret destroyers. Hold you up to the flames. And why do I get. Rolling? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Solomon Mike, welcome to the video. Got a dope little package. I already opened it because I'm a little kid and I couldn't have the patience, but I wanted to do an unbo unboxing for you. But again, I have the ADD and the excitement of a six-year-old, so I ripped it open, but I brought it here to show you out. So, Barber Brigade's dropping some new shit, some new fire. Check your boy out. Uh, uh. Baseball tee. I don't know when it comes out, so stay tuned to my Instagram, Silent Mike with two Ks, Barber Brigade on Instagram. But new drops coming. We'll show you some of the hot shit. This is probably my favorite one. That's why I checked it on. Baseball tees, for some reason, begin the right size. And it's the right fit. You look jack. Easy black tee, right up my alley. I'm a basic bitch. Ash. Going back to the school. We got the navy blue and red. One of my favorite color combos. Same clean white. Okay, but just a crew neck. I'll let you guys know when the launch is coming. I don't know, but hopefully you enjoy the video. We answer some questions. I hit some squats, bench, overhead, and chin ups. Diet's still rocking. Let's get into it. Someone asks, why do you get on a plane, on a boat, but inside of a car? How often do you have like minor injuries and how do you fix them? Yes, yeah, so we've ranted about this a little bit. Um, whether you're injured or hurt, how, how often do I feel perfect? Rarely. How often am I actually injured? Also rarely, a couple times a year with my back, and that's just been me. Uh, I think the, often most lifters don't get injured. How often do you tweak something? Does something ache or hurt? Very often, maybe even weekly if you're a competitive power lifter. You're kind of always, not fixing something, but always something's gonna be tender. The sport's hard and you're progressively overloading your body. It's gonna be difficult, but injuries, actual injuries shouldn't happen that often. Being hurt, a beat up, uh, maybe more often. How do you learn or fix it? You just gotta analyze what you're doing, you know, your posture and sleep throughout the day, your programming, maybe you're doing too much, maybe you're doing too little potentially, um, and then also technique itself. So those are the things you look at, kind of analyze within yourself. You gotta be self-aware as a lifter or communicate with your coach and uh, then figure out what's causing it and how to fix it. I don't really feel like lifting weights. Let's be goddamn honest. Mike, what do you do when you don't feel like lifting weights? Mike, I'm not motivated. I just fucking lift weights. That's what I do. I don't want to lift weights right now. I'd rather be on my couch. Mike, what do you do when the weight feels heavy? I don't know, put on less weight. What's a good thing to look for in a coach? A good thing to look in a coach. So I think that's a, a really good question because first you gotta decide, um, online or in person, what experience you are and what experience they are, what your goals are. Obviously, if your goals are competitive powerlifting, you wanna head down that road. Online may be better because there's just uh, easier access to the best. Um, nowadays, it is hard because everyone's a freaking online coach, but I think there's a combination of things. Um, you know, school may be one of them, but in my opinion, that lies lower on the priority list just because even with a kinesiology degree or something of that nature, even a certification, did I say that weird? Certification. Uh, I only got 500 milligrams of caffeine rolling through my veins. Uh, that you um, don't necessarily you don't necessarily learn the things uh, that are so applicable to what we do. You learn general strength and conditioning, a little bit of anatomy, stuff like that, physiology, but not necessarily strength and conditioning for powerlifting or even athletes. Some of that um, isn't really taught in the classroom. So, one is experience as a lifter. Uh, what have they done? And that doesn't mean world records, that just means have they competed, have they been around the sport for a long time, have they had good mentors, have they trained around uh, significant or experienced lifters themselves? Two, who and what have they coached over the time? If they've only coached beginners and you're maybe an intermediate or advanced, you probably don't want to go to that person. Um, and then three, does their style of training, their style of communication um, work with you? And I think those are kind of the, the main keys to hit. What they have done as a coach, who they've worked with, uh, two, what they've done as an athlete. And again, that's not world records. That just means that they're comp maybe compete or been in the sport a long time and are familiar. And then three, does their style of communication, coaching, or programming perhaps or perhaps not work with you or your personality? 
That was pretty good. I just made that shit up on the spot, huh? Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. You see these veins coming in my thighs? There's no vein there. Dude, there's veins. What do you think that blue shit is? I just gotta get a tan and shave these monkey thighs. <laughs> I'll be Alberto Nunez in no time. This guy says, can you tell my friend Pat, itching isn't a successful lift. Look, when we're talking sumo, when we're talking conventional, when we're talking hitching or ramping, it all depends on the rules of the activity you're doing. So if you're doing strongman, sumo's cheating. If you're doing powerlifting, hitching and ramping's cheating. So, based on that fact, I need to know what Pat is doing. Pat, what are your goals? Comment below, Pat. Undies or loose undies? It's a great conversation. When working out. It's a great conversation. It's been popping up in my mind a lot. I have one pair of whitey tidies in all of my possession, and I'm proud to announce that. I did that one USAPL meet, I bought $10 Lacoste, shout out to Lacoste for the whitey tidies because that's the only thing that's legal. I hadn't worn whitey tidies since probably the second grade, when it was not cool because sagging was cool and you can't sag with whitey tidies because then your ass cheeks are hanging out. You had to go boxers, and boxer briefs I don't even think were a thing at the time. But Michael Jordan was then on TV, I was a very conflicted child, Michael Jordan was on a Hanes commercial talking about the whitey tidies he wears. So I want to be like Michael Jordan, but I want to sag my pants like all the cool rappers. Conflict of interest. Right now I wear boxer briefs. They're not always the most uh, uh, breathable, but the stability, the compression, the support is wonderful. So in that regard, I'm a big fan. But I had thrown on my random pair of whitey tidies from the USAPL the other day, rocked those around, and now that Skinny stuff's cool, short shorts and skinny jeans. You don't sag no more. You gotta follow the trends, kids. As I'm getting old, I gotta follow the trends harder, stay cool, stay hip. I kind of, I kind of liked how they felt. I kind of liked how they held me. So I don't know, I don't know. Boxer briefs used to be my go-to, used to be an easy answer. Boxer briefs, conversation over. Cotton or cotton, cotton poly mix used to be the answer, but after experimenting with the whitey tidies, they're blue tidies, technically. Never go whitey tidies, cause you know why. <laughs> you know why. In case of a blowout, <clears throat> I went whitey tighties and it was pretty comfy. Um, I think this is, uh, I know Alan's eating, but I think this is a question for Alan Thrall. He might have the final answer of it. Um, I think it depends on the activity. I wish there was something even more in between, like a lighter spandex, because like, this is like workout spandex. This shit's way too thick to wear with like normal pants or every day. But there is a lighter one that's a, 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 a boxer brief. Boxer brief's my final answer, I'm out. Who would be three dream people to have on your podcast? Mama's Voice Podcast, three. How, how like, uh, realistic? Any, this question said anyone in the world. Current? Yeah. They gotta be alive then? Yeah, alive. Who's there a third? Oh, I got it. Come on. Mama's Boys Dream Podcast lineup. Kanye West? In no particular order. Kanye West? Elon Musk. And who else did we just say? I just forgot it. Pink man. No. Kanye. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, Kanye West, Elon Musk. Top three right now. 